President Trump threatening to close the border this week over undocumented immigration. This would have a dramatic economic impact. The southern border facilitates one and a half billion dollars in trade in goods with Mexico every day. The Republican chairman of the Senate Homeland Security Committee, Ron Johnson, he says closing the border would be, quote, a self-inflicted wound on our economy. Are you concerned at all about closing the border, given the effect it will have on the American economy? Sure, but we're also concerned about the effect of the American economy and the nation as a whole from having 100,000, more than 100,000 people cross illegally uh, this month. If we close the borders, why would we do that? Because we need the people who are working at the legal ports of entry to go patrol, and I'm not making this up, where there's no wall. We were not lying to people when we said that this was an emergency. Very, uh, very few people believed us, especially folks in the media and the Democrat Party. It is an emergency. I think you saw an interview with Jay Johnson this week on another network that said the 4,000 people per day, which is what we had, I think, one day it's last week. Absolutely is a humanitarian an, crisis. Absolutely. absolutely. I don't question that for one second, and but I never have. Congress won't give us. Congress won't give us any money to fix it. They won't change the law to fix it. So we're going to do the best with what we have. And if that means pulling people off of the ports of entry to put them out um, in, 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 on the border where there's no wall, we will absolutely do that. Well, let me ask you, because the State Department told CNN yesterday that the U.S., the Trump administration, is going to cut off aid to the Northern Triangle countries, the Central American countries, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras. Your own border experts and your own administration say that investing in those countries is working. For instance, in El Salvador, USAID money has gone to El Salvador, the homicide rate has gone down, and migration from El Salvador has gone down as well. Isn't this also self-defeating? Taking away aid from those countries ultimately will make the migration crisis worse. Look, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of good ways to help solve this problem. Congress could do it, but they're not going to. Mexico could help us do it, they need to do a little bit more. Honduras could do more. Nicaragua do, could do more. El Salvador could do more. And if we're going to give these countries hundreds of millions of dollars, we would like them to do more. That, uh, Jake, I would respectfully submit to you, is not an unreasonable position. Um, we could prevent a lot of what's happening on the southern border by preventing people from moving into Mexico in the first place. Right, but that's uh, what that's the USAID what, money does, is it, it is it makes those countries more stable. This is not according to me. This is no, according no, to experts but in but your own what, administration. Right. Okay, uh, career staffers. But let's talk about let's talk about that for a second. If it's working so well, why are the people still coming? Why are these historic numbers? Again, a hundred thousand people will cross the border this month alone. Um, that is that that is a crisis. It's a humanitarian crisis. It's a security crisis. I think at least now people are starting to realize that we were not exaggerating a couple months ago when we had this this nationwide debate about the wall. So I hear what you're saying that people say it's working, but the proof is in the numbers. It's not working well enough to help us solve our border crisis, and that's what the president's focused on. President Trump reversed his administration's proposed cuts uh, for the Special Olympics on Friday. A Department of Education official told CNN that the Education Department made repeated requests to include Special Olympics funding, but the Office of Management and Budget, uh, which I believe you are still the formal head of, uh, yeah. denied those repeated requests. President Trump subsequently has overruled you and OMB and gone with what DOE, the Education Department, originally wanted to do. Why were those requests for Special Olympics funding denied initially and repeatedly? The, the, those debates go on all of the time. I mean, there's folks on all sorts of different sides of arguments when it comes to the entire piece of the budget. Keep in mind, the budget is $1.3 trillion. That's $1,300,000 million, of which Special Olympics was 17. So 17 of 1,300,000. These debates take place all of the time. What did the president do? Uh, the president simply listened to people. Uh, it's what he does. When the president realized that the public wanted this money, he made the change. This is what he does. It's his budget. Yes, we have disagreements amongst ourselves. I hope that people would encourage that. We're not simply uh, running around with a bunch of yes people saying, you know, not discussing anything. We have real serious issues or real serious discussions about serious issues. The president makes the final determination. He wanted to make the change. He made the change. We're happy to move forward from here.